I'm in Portland, Oregon, a land of vineyards and farmlands as far as the eye can see. And my eye can see far because I eat my carrots every day. Everyone here is part of a tight-knit community that works together to provide the best of their land and the best of their skills. Probably the best example of this is the Myelotta Feast, put on by Kathy Wims and Rob Roy of Nostrano. I'm gonna meet with them and see how they work with the locals to create some incredible dishes. But first, let's like look at this view for one sec. Okay, I'm hungry, let's go. Thanks for letting me pop into Nostrata. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, Nostrata is an Italian restaurant, and an Italian, it means what is local and what's from the very area in which you're from. So Rob, where do you tie in all this? So I do all of the whole animal butchering. The okay. Italian word for that is machalayo. I also make a lot of dishes. I thought you were saying another Italian word, but you said make a lot of. Never mind. Make a lot of. Make a lot of machalayo. One of the things that you've brought back from Italy is maialata. Can you tell me a little bit about like what inspired you to bring that back? So I was traveling in the northeastern part of Italy near Venice, and I was sitting at a winery, and they told me about this maialata, and I was like, what's a maialata? And they said, well, it's a celebration of the pig, and we have it every Every year, the whole community comes together and we make sausages and we put up prosciutto for the winter and they were celebrating, drinking wine. And I thought, this is great. I mean, this is such a community coming together and we really could do this in Portland. I hope you're hungry. I'm starving. So tonight we're gonna be preparing a Tuscan style porchetta, which is a pork loin wrapped in bacon surrounded by chicharrones. There's gonna be another style of porchetta, which is porchetta di testa, which basically means the roll of the head. We should go collect the ingredients that we need, check out Rye Rose Creamery and a brewery, Wolves and People, and then we'll end up at the pig farm, Warden Great. Hill, where we can make a huge feast. And then we'll meet you later for the cooking. Great. <laughs> Bye, Kathy. We'll see you soon, Kathy. Okay. So we're headed up here to Briar Rose Creamery. For the Mylotta, we had a huge cheese board with fry rose creamery spread. So this cheese is like the real deal. It is. You'll see. Sarah, Sarah. this is Courtney. Hi. Hi nice Courtney. to meet you. We're kind of on this mini Mylotta tour. We're here to pick up some cheese for our dinner tonight. You come to the right spot. Yes. It smells cheesy in here, like in a good way. I feel like I'm about to eat a lot of good cheese. Oh, you will. Can you tell me a little bit about the creamery? I started Briar Rose with the intention of making fresh and aged goat cheeses. And since then, we've actually expanded into cow's milk cheese as well. Can we head back into the make room and see, see what she got? Absolutely, but first we gotta suit up. So, hairnet <laughs> booties, we're in. Cool. Miss New Booty, let's do it. All right. So we're in the make room where the magic happens. What is this big old vat? So this vat is half full of curds and whey. So this is what Miss Muffet ate every morning. What's the process like with this? Yesterday afternoon, this was milk. We heated it up and pasteurized it and then cool it back down to start the fermentation process. So at that point, we introduce cultures, which are beneficial bacteria, and that's going to help influence the flavor, the texture, as well as the aroma of our cheese. Then we come back and we add rennet. It pulls it into what we call a matrix. It becomes She's with their this, cheese curds like, Whoa. This lovely gel, that's <laughs> where the magic really happens. So we're gonna transform what was a liquid into a gel. So then we let it sit and ripen overnight. When we are cutting this large mass of curd, the curds start releasing the whey, which is gonna go off to the pigs over at Warden Hill Farm. The whey has a lot of protein, a lot of fat in it. It helps build muscle tissue, and it's really delicious, and the pigs just go crazy. Have you seen them? Is it nuts? They're going hog wild. Yeah, <laughs> like literally hog wild. For them, it's a big treat, it's like candy. So I'm gonna take this little bundle, and we're gonna hang it over here and let it drain. And you can see whey is coming off. No way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you let it hang out? So the curd is gonna drain for a day or two. It just varies depending on how moist I want that final cheese to be. But if I wanted to try something right now, can you hook it up? I think we can do that. Let's do it. All right. All right. Mmm. Whoa. Little salty, it's like a nutty earthiness almost. It's super creamy, it's like whipped. That's just the quality of our, our handmade chef. I've got our goat milk feta. We heated it up and pasteurized it. We have more rennet in there, so it's gonna get a lot firmer, a lot faster. It's like a nice, crumbly, salty texture. Light tang, a little nutty, really creamy. That's how feta should be. Thank you so much for showing us around. My and pleasure. Giving us a little taste of what you do here. 
But I think it's time for us to head out because we have more stops. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for letting me take this. Grab that. Go, Grab some go, cheese. go, right. go. See you guys. Happy trails. <laughs> We're going to a brewery, is that what's yeah. happening? We're heading up to Wolves and People. This is also a spot where we can get some grain, some spent grain from the uh, brewery process to feed the hogs over at Warden Hill. Hey. What's up, man? Hey. I'm Courtney. Nice to meet you. I'm Christian. Nice hey. to meet you. How's it going? I'm Rob. Hey, how you doing? Good. We're on a little journey. We're traveling around. We're going to have a little feast. And we're going to Wolfgang's. And yeah. I know you have a good connection with him because his pigs eat your spent grain. Tell me a little bit about Wolves and People. A little farmhouse brewery, a bunch of rustic styles from Europe, some of our own inventions. One thing that makes our brewery unique, we're using things that are grown here on the farm, and then we're working with people like Wolfgang, who takes our spent grain back to his pigs. So it's a beautiful circle. Just to clarify, spent grain is grain that basically you've gotten everything that you've been able to use out of it. It's not entirely used up. Basically, rinsing that grain, taking out the starches and sugars that are going to be fermented into the beer. At the end, what you have is some proteins, a little bit of fiber. The hogs love it. They get a little buzz on. That's the second time I've heard, like, the pigs really love it. So it's cool that we're, yeah. we're making the pigs happy. So we're going to have a mini Mialata. We thought, what better beer to have to pair with the pig than the grain that started it all, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, wait. What yeah, time man. is it? We got a beer clock. Yeah. Lead the time way. Time to taste some beer. Let's roll. Let's do it. So what would you recommend going with the pork? Pesca, which means peach in Italian, and also fishing. This beer is aged in oak, a Pinot Noir barrel, re-fermented with local peaches. This is also a rich beer, 8.5%, a nice Venus character. What nice is Venus? character, what does that mean? A wine-like mouthfeel. Oh, um, Venus like vino, like wine-like. Yep. And I think uh, I was thinking Venus, like Venus, yeah, like, like out of this world. Yeah. Cheers to Pesca. Whoa, okay, yeah. It was a Pinot barrel, you said? That's what's giving it like that bold flavor. The peaches, it just gives it a, a, a hint of fruitiness that is really, really, really good. Thank you, thanks a lot. I love yeah. that. We're only making this beer when the peaches are ripe, and that's kind of one thing that sets us apart, is when a fruit is ripe, it's coming into the brewery, and we're gonna try and incorporate it into the process. This is definitely a contender. Do you have any other options? The beer we're brewing today is called Instinctive Travels, inspired by a tribe called Quest. It's a bright, very balanced, uh, traditional Saison that we also dry hop. It's 6.4% ABV, really low bitterness. And when we're done brewing that beer, we're going to take that spent grain to the cart outside that Wolfgang gives us so he can transport that grain to his pigs. This is like the most similar to, to a wine that I've tasted. It's got a little bit of funk to it, a little bit of like graininess to it. It's meant to be a beer that is really broadly appealing, but it has a little bit of that basement-y, kind of musty funk yeah. thing going on. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is yeah. a winner. I'm really excited to eat it <laughs> with my pork. I guess when you come here, you talk about the pigs and then you drink like a pig, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you need some help. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna take them off. I'm good. All right. Thinking the pesca to start for the charcuterie. Yeah. Something that's like kind of light, a little fruity. And then for the pork, I think we should get this instinctive travels. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more earthy, a little yeah. bit more mild. I think a case of each should be fine. Yeah, and we'll just we take these with us right now. Yeah, while we wait. And then you can go get those for us if you want. You got it. All right, thank you. cheers, thanks again, guys. Seriously, thank you. Cheers. So really Christian. delicious stuff. Thank you so much. So this is the magical place of Warden Hill Farm. This looks magical. I feel like I'm coming to the end of the fairy tale and I'm gonna live here forever. Hello! Hey, Susan. Hi, Hi. I'm Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much for letting us, you know, have my mini Mialata here. My Mialata is what I'm calling it. I like yeah. that. So tell me a little bit about Warden Hill Farm. I actually grew up on this farm. We bought the property from my parents in 2007. We had this property and we were like, well, what are we gonna do with the property? We decided to do pigs. We started with four. Now we have 40 pigs at one time on our farm. I keep hearing that they're so happy and they're, they've had, they have a great life. They're able to roam. I mean, if they got this view, I'm kind of jealous. And really close to Briar Rose and yes. Wolves and People. Yes. It helps us and it helps them because they need to get rid of the product and we would like to feed it to our pigs. <gasps> and they come. Hi, guys. I'm so glad that we're ending our Portland adventure here. Let's start cooking it up. You lead the way. All right, here we are with our half hog. In preparation for tonight's dinner, we're going to have to break this down and turn this into a porchetta. 
Explain so, all the all cuts right. that we got going on. The loin is right here. We've got our spare ribs, our short ribs up here right below the loin, and then the belly underneath that, Whoa. where the bacon is. Yeah, it's the uh, best part of the thing. Yeah, it is. We're gonna start out with separating the shoulder from the midsection. Right. So we're gonna find the split in the vertebra, and I'm just going in between the vertebra right there. And then I'm gonna grab this really big knife here, slice right through. Now we have the shoulder blade right here, and then a little tip of the ribs. Just the tip. Just the tip. But we're not gonna have this for dinner. We're going to separate the leg. The ham. Yep, the ham. Very good, the ham from the midsection. Great. A little harder. Mm. You did it. We're gonna separate the flank a little bit here and make a straight cut all the way down. I can do that. And we'll go ahead and put these away so we can focus on the midsection, which is gonna be our porchetta. We're going to remove the rib. I do that by scoring on each side, kind of ride the bone all the way down. And then we twist the rib bone up and kind of just pop it off. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Hell yeah. Ooh, that's good. It's all smooth. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. We just need to take out the spine now. Okay. So I'm going right under the feather bones here. Wow. We've got the feather bones, which are connected to the spine, which is just all the vertebra. Whoa. All right, now, now coming back. Whoa. So all this is the people. loin and the rib meat and then the belly, which is the bacon. So it's the loin rolled into the belly. We're going to take this up to Kathy. It's all done so she can season it up and turn it into the porchetta. Yes, let's do it. You carry it, I will bring up the rear. All right, let's go. Hey, you guys, you made it. Hey, you How long it brought the porchetta? So how do we make this? into the beautiful porchetta. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is score the skin. So you don't wanna go too far down. Like an inch away? Yeah, that perfect, far? yeah. Huh? Good job. So now we're gonna flip it back over. And then I'm gonna rub it with, this is garlic. Save some for the porchetta di testa. You know what, I don't detest it. The porchetta. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, Kathy, you get it, come on. This is a special sauce that Rob brought back from Anzano in Tuscany. You wanna tell us what's in it? Well, there's lavender Ooh. in there. Juniper berries, fennel pollen, fennel seed. That's the fennel pollen. Whoa. And then the rosemary, right? And black pepper. You wanna help me roll? Yes, please. Turn it around. I'll turn it this way. It's like piggy yoga. We're going to take this and go around. You're gonna go over the first string and under. So go around this. And then we're gonna this, and we're gonna this. Good job, Courtney. High five me, guys. That's how we roll. Get it? Because it's yeah, it's all right. totally rolled up. Because it's a roll. All right, so we got that snug in there. Cover it with foil. In the oven. Okay, I got it for you. Thank you. Okay. Porchetta is in the oven. What is next? We are going to prepare the porchetta di testa. Go get it. I'm going. Go get it. This guy. Uh, can't live without him. Can't live without him. You know what I mean? Check this out. Whoa. So this is the pig head, which is going to be the porchetta di testa. But now we are going to debone the skull. So take all of the kind of face meat off. Basically follow the jawline all the way up around the head. I've seen that in a scary movie before. We are going to take off the ears. What? I couldn't hear you. And I'm also going to incorporate some of the organs here, the heart. We've got our tongue right here, and then the cheeks. You want to do the garlic? I'll do the garlic. I usually sous vide it for like 14 hours. I have one that I prepared earlier. Cool. I don't have 14 hours. Can't have too much of the controne. Little heat, little sweet. And then let's get some rosemary on it. So now what we're going to do is kind of lay some of the tongue, heart, cheeks. So we just kind of lay them all there. And then the ears here will create this little white line. It's like a yeah. streak of lightning. Go ahead and roll it up. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. Now that it's all rolled up, we would just tie it exactly how we tied the Tuscan style porchetta. Okay. And then we would put it in a vacuum seal bag with nothing else, just dry. Because as this cooks, it's going to create lots of gelatin. So I've got one that I prepared. So this is all what kind of rendered out of the porchetta di testa. All of the gelatin that came out. Isn't that cool? It's actually really tasty. You wanna try some? 
Oh, actually, that's really good. <laughs> oh, do. I'll let you get that ready to go, and then we'll go get ready for dinner, right? Okay, sounds great. Grab a little bit of that jello for the road, Kath. Guys, we did it. After all that work, it's time to eat. Rob and I picked out this beer to start from Wolves and People. <laughs> Cheers, salute. Prost. A prost. We have our porchetta di testa. Cheers. I can't believe that that is all meat that you usually have no purpose for besides making stock. It's not too acidic, it's spiced perfectly. It, it's velvety pork. A little bit of aromatic, a little bit of sweetness, the rosemary. It's just a hint of it, it's perfect. We've got the smoked trout mousse over here. Smoked trout mixed with the briar rose chev. That's incredible. The aromatics are really, really strong in that. It's a beef cube, eat it and enjoy it. Yeah, and then here is the chicholi. It's kind of like a pork riette. The texture of it is like a pulled pork meets a sausage. That is delicious. People have been eating pork for so long and they had to keep their pork, you know, to feed the family. And they would make this and it was made to last. It sustains. And to sustain. Yeah, and that ties into the maillotta. The mini maillotta has not begun until the pork addict gets out. Are you guys ready for a course number two? Absolutely. Let's get down to business. Cheers. There's also some salsa verde here. Oh. So salsa verde is really um, a traditional sauce for roasted meats. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just so mm -hmm. sweet and so clean tasting. There's parts of it that taste bacony. There's parts of it that taste really hearty and porky. It's got so much to mention. It's so rich and it's so beautiful. So this is really the best part. All right. You hear that? You hear this? It's like a cornucopia of texture and flavor. When you eat something like this and you're like, this is this was our pig, like, do you have a sense of pride? I totally do. Yeah, I really do. Especially when it's cooked so well. That's a maillotta. It's like celebrating the pig. It takes a village. It takes a village. Thank you guys, seriously, for for showing me about the maillotta and for, for letting us be here. And you guys are the best. And Courtney, you let us have a mini maillotta. You know, I just, if what I want to do for the people of Portland, you're welcome. I'm just kidding, but seriously, no, I'm the lucky one. Shed a little porchetta oh. tear. <laughs> I'm crying, oh no, that's pork fat. Cheers to you, you're let's welcome. do another mini maillotta. Multi mini maillottas. It's a wee lotta, let's be real. Portland, you've been incredible. Your sense of community and dedication to local food was amazing. My journey gave me some new friends, new experiences, and a maillotta feast that wrapped up my adventure like a nice, juicy porchetta.